Hey, I'm Caleb Harris from You Can Make This Too. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm doing something a little different and hijacking pop wood playback for popular woodworking because it's just not millennial enough yet. Now this week I've been wrapping up my machine substitution series and working on a router table that's gonna go beside my table saw. But we'll get into those later because I know you're here for everyone else's videos. The first video I wanna talk about is from a new channel that I just found called Tools Together where he makes a mid-century plant stand with no hardware or glues. It's entirely held together by joinery. Now, normally these kind of projects that are all joinery projects come off as really intimidating, but he does it in a super approachable way. And I really enjoyed his production value and camera shots. Um, his pacing and music really go with the theme. And at the end of it, you just kind of have this sense of, oh wow, you know, I really don't have to be a woodworking superhero to do that kind of project. And his approach to things with all the different jigs he used, just uh, I really liked because I'm a big jig fan. And speaking of jigs, our next video is from the jig master himself, Izzy Swan, and it's his modern at Iron Dak chair video. What I really liked about it was how he shows sort of the iterative process and how you can take one design and then come up with multiple products with it. He builds three chairs, two of them, I'm pretty sure are the same. One is just slightly different. Now, another thing I really like about this is, of course, if it's an Izzy Swan video, you know there's gonna be some awesome jigs, and he has a production background. So he shows how he makes some super simple table saw jigs to make some of the repetitive parts like the chairs just incredibly fast. The other thing I really like about this video from him is seeing Izzy's approach to a build on the go type of project. It doesn't seem like this is something he completely mapped out before he started. He just has this idea, he's prototyping it and he builds as he goes. And how he does that is just very different from how I often work and how I see many other videos where everything is entirely deliberate. So it's neat to see how you can still come out with a really cool product even just by the seat of your pants. Now we have a really cool video by Tamar over at 3x3 Custom where she makes a bowl without a lathe. Now what I really enjoyed about this was her really creative use of jigs with the router it, to create this, but along the way she hit several stumbling blocks and I really like how she shared her journey and just the tenacity to keep solving each problem as it comes up and get after it. And the final result was just crazy impressive considering that it was mostly done with a bandsaw and a router. And now for probably the most fun video we're gonna talk about today, which is from Chris over at Third Coast Craftsman, where he makes a cornhole board with a twist. So now every summer there's a lot of video on cornhole boards, but I really liked his integration of LEDs. These things just look super cool. And Chris is the only guy I know of who could possibly do a video that, you know, is something we've all seen, but features LED and epoxy and still break out the hand planes and chisels and make them a star of the show. Also, he closed out his video with a really awesome bit of a cornhole showdown between him and his dog, Oots. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's pretty awesome. So you really need to check that out. And the last video I'm going to talk about today is from Sam DIY Huntress and she did a herringbone address sign for her house. Most of Sam's content is at Instagram and her blog. She's kind of new on YouTube, but her videos are great and she really nails the step-by-step -step tutorial type videos. And I like this one because she has a great explanation and details of how to do a herringbone pattern. And even though this is sort of a small form project, all her tips about doing herringbone stuff will work for any size herringbone project you want to do. Another thing I like about Sam's projects is she works out of a shop that I'm pretty sure is smaller than some of my closets. Not that I have really big closets. So the fact that she's able to work with such an environment and still come out with such really cool projects is pretty awesome. So definitely go check her out. So I'm just getting ready to start doing some pocket holes to hold together my router table, but there is sort of a bonus uh, video I'd like to mention, and that's actually from Popular Woodworking. They recently put out a tips video on router bit height and making it a little jig to make it easier to reset your router bit to common heights you might use a lot. Something I'm gonna do right now to make sure I don't forget is set the distance on this jig because that is something I did, can't tell you how many times I've drilled holes into wood then realized I forgot to reset my jig or my bit, speaking of, let's check the bit, and it was at the wrong size, so aggravating. Yeah, not the right size. 
So anyways, you guys can find links to all the videos in the description box down below. And you'll also find a link to my channel if you want to see how this router cable comes out or check out the machine substitution series I just finished. Please head down, you'll find all that at my channel. My deal with the machine substitution series was I went through each machine in my shop, the table saw, jointer, planer, drill press, band saw, and broke down every task that those machines accomplish and then showed you how to accomplish all of those tasks with other machines or regular hand power tools like drill, driver, circular saw, router, jigsaw, etc. You guys get the idea. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Be sure to check out all those other awesome creators that we highlighted and we'll see you next time at Popwood Playback.